So, uh, what year did you first go to the jailhouse? Probably when it opened up. In like '92. I mean, pretty much. Yeah, it was pretty much the only game in town. I think previous to that was like Fafoon. Right. And uh, they would do like on mainly bigger shows. Yep. Um, but it was yeah, jailhouse. When Dom opened that up, it was definitely fill the void, and that's where we started getting a bunch of people that would become promoters. Right. So right. There's a lot of like derivative records was happening at that time, playing there. I mean, there was Stornoway and, and other places for sure, but. Where was Stornoway? I've never heard of this venue in my life. Stornoway? Yeah. Um, that was, I'm pretty sure that was the place I was off St. Catherine. I played Stornoway. Right. Time. My memory's just a piece of shit. Was this before the Doughboys? No, Doughboys were like 1987. Right. So, and what year was JLS? I think it was 92 to 2001. Okay. But it got taken over by the by the brothers in the, in like in 96 or 98. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, JLS was like, I mean, everybody knew Dom and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, but I mean, if you knew Dom, have you talked to Dom yet? No, he's he's out of town. We're gonna we're gonna do some stuff There's online. Like some funny stuff like, like. It's a bar that serves liquids. Yeah. And he, he carpeted the entire place. Yeah. So it was all so disgusting. Like a month, it just reeked like you know month old beer, and it just progressively got worse. And there'd be dogs like running around oh. there too, and it was all carpet. So it was like it just totally got completely trashed. But the best show I ever saw, I, I saw so many shows there. Um, I think it was Super Suckers, yeah. where the sound man mixed up the monitors and the house thing so we put the house through the monitors and the monitors <laughs> through the house that was funny as hell yeah. I mean, usually there was always sound issues, issues yeah um and they had this like one rocker dude like full-blown rock and roll kind of dude like van halen yeah sound guy which was you know the regime of, of the day you know they were all rock dudes who were like just bummed out to be working with these shitty punk bands or whatever. right and Jesus Lizard played there the, yeah first time they came to town is when the, the stage was near the front of the street right and then they moved it to the back yeah so uh, so basically they only had the first record out had which was done with a drum machine right but at this time they got Mac McNeely but pretty much nobody knew them but I was like a huge fan of Scratch Acid, mm-hmm. which was David Yao's band previous. And I was like just really into touch and go bands at the time and stuff like that. So they came in, but it was like me, I think maybe Jeff Way, <laughs> Pat from uh, he worked at Greenland and they does all the, the hard work and yep. stuff. And he ran derivative records at the time. It was like a handful of us. Lori Edmonds. With not very many people. Yeah, it was a bunch of people. A bunch of us that worked at Cargo. Yeah. Essentially. It was basically people who worked at Cargo. Um, and so, uh, so David Yao does his thing, obviously. He's Dave, they, they don't give a shit that nobody's in the audience. I mean, they were yeah. fucking amazing. Like, I was blown away. But David Yao does his thing all the time where he shoves the microphone down his throat and just goes, yeah, and just goes up to people. And kind of, he's like a super funny guy, and he's usually super, super drunk before you can get on stage. So he's just shoving his mic down his thing, and the, the sound man runs like the 100 feet to stop him. Yeah. And he's going, ah, freaking out. It's this rocker guy. And he goes, no, no, no. And he pulls the mic out of David Yao's mouth. David Yao's like, what the fuck? And he's like, like this. And he goes, uh, into the mic. And David Yao goes, Oh, okay, okay. And then the guy, sound man, turns around to go back to the board and he just shoves it back in his mouth and just goes, ah. And I was like, fuck, this is amazing. I went there with Gigi Allen too. Oh, wow. Like throwing in during the day. My roommate was drumming for him when he played a Fafoon at the Shock Art Festival, I think it was 92 or something. And so we would go there to drink before they would go and rehearse. Mm-hmm. My roommate. And I knew of Gigi Allen, but I was like, uh, you know, I just thought him to be kind of an asshole. All right. And we would be sitting there drinking, and he fucking loved the fuck out of my roommate. It was like, you're the best drummer. It was Dave Reese, who was in SNFU, and My Dog Popper, and he is an amazing drummer. But uh, instead of, like, ordering at the far end of the bar, it was really long, he would just grab beer balls, and I'm not even kidding, just throw them at the fucking bartender. And I was like, dude, I got to get the fuck out of here. This guy's fucked. But he loved the fuck out of me because I liked ZZ Top. 
so as well. <laughs> and uh, to like when it when it ended, like you've you've been playing in bands since it, since before it was open. Yeah, I only and, and since it, once. I think I think once. But not yeah. I played there in like this. My friend was in this like glam rock band. I played in that band for like a joke. Yeah. Essentially, one nine seven six. Terrible, terrible band. Um, but yeah, I, I just went to shows there all the time. Yeah. And like I've had had people say nothing really filled its it, the void because it kind of had I this. I played it twice. Right. It twice. Yeah. <laughs> played on both sides when the stage was at the far end. And on the back. The street, yeah. Do you think anything's replaced it, or it was kind of like the small rock and roll venue? Yeah. yeah. Castle replaced it, and if you talk to Moro, he was just so displeased with Casa, and it was definitely had this aura of you know rock with the rock and rock right. kind of bar. Okay. Um, that he wanted to create an alternative in the same, same capacity. And it was like that was the reason he started Casa, was, or, or at least Hotel. Right. And Hotel moved into uh, Casa. Casa. Huh. Yeah. And uh, what was what was the most? I mean, you've already told me a bunch of wild stories. What, what, what's your most memorable experience there? Probably those two. No, those two. Yeah. 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 I mean, I've so I've seen yeah. Jesus Lizard so many yeah. times, and they're probably my favorite live band I've ever seen. Uh, but yeah, that David Yao story was just, because it was all of us just busting up. Like, yeah. it was, there was nobody there. And it was just all of us laughing. Right. Even, even the band were laughing. You know? it, was, it was like, yeah, it was amazing. You never saw shit. I mean, the yeah. carpet thing too just made me laugh. Right. Like, <laughs> like crazy. I remember like Dom's dog or something running around the place. And it just it's like pissing. Just walked in, it just it smelled like pissing beer. Yeah, and it reminded me of all these shit places I played on tour. Right. Like, it, it, I was like, surely most bands after that carpet just got fucking grim. So why they put a carpet in there? That's bananas. That is quite bananas. Yeah, and I remember I was always scared of Dave. The owner? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he was like, he was a fucking badass motherfucker. And I didn't even bother yep. fucking who we talking to. I just figured, yep. I don't know him, but I, yeah. I just got the yeah. vibes. I've heard, I've heard the Dom. Dom. Yeah, Dom. Yeah. Yep. Cool. All right, thanks. <laughs>